Okay, so how about uh, reducing from the left direction? What does that really mean? So as, an, as a motivating example, let's try to implement reverse, where we want to reverse a list. Um, so let's do that here in the bottom. Separate this, I'm going to call this uh, left reduction example. Okay, so we want to implement this function. Uh, so we're going to implement uh, reverse. So reverse takes a list, define uh, reverse, takes a list, returns to do. Call this. Oh, let me comment out that code. Now I call it doesn't work. So let's try to implement this function. What do we do? We have to go through the, all the elements of the list in order to reverse them. So what does reversing mean? Okay, so what we can do is we, we're going to need to do a, a, a conditional, right, to go through to know whether we've reached the base case or not, or whether we're in the recursive step. So let's check that. So is the list empty? It's not, we're going to do something. Okay, so if the list is empty uh, and we want to reverse it, well, that's pretty easy, right? So if we check equal, if the list is empty, uh, reverse of uh, list should return the same list, right? So in this case, we just return empty. Otherwise, what do we do? So let me just uh, run this, show you guys that the first one is, is passing. So this test is passing, but this one is failing, of course. Um, so otherwise, what do we do? Well, um, for now, let's just assume we will have reverse of, um, so we have L, which let's say it's list one, two, three, four. Okay. What is first of L? Well, that would be one. What is rest of L? Well, that would be a two, three, four. Okay. So how do we implement this if we do if we do the reverse of rest of list, we would get four, three, two. Uh-oh. So how do we add something to the right? Uh, well, we learn how to use a pen. That would be one way, right? So that would be one possibility. So let's start with that. So what we could do is we could add the element one to the right. The element one is the first of L. So if we uh, maybe take reverse of list and we add a list with the first element. All right. So if we create a list, okay, so let me just write here, list of first of L, right? First of L is one, then list of first of L is going to be a list. Uh, it's just going to be a list with one, right? Let me just write this. Correct. So if I append um, a list with four, three, two, and I append one on the right hand side, what I effectively am doing is I'm creating four, three, two, one. Right. So now I need to close the cond. See if this works. Uh, two, two, two. Ah, see the code uh, was hanging. And this is always a good telltale that there is some, I forgot to do a rest of list. Okay. So, so then I went through my recursive call and I noticed that was just L and it of course needs to be rest of L. Okay. And now everything works, which is great. This is one way, but in this code, we're using append. This is actually not the best way as, as you could see, if you try to profile this code. Uh, because you are adding, um, you know, you have to go through all the elements of the list with append. As we saw, even append is not even tail recursive as of now. So can we do this better? Okay, so let's call this reverse version one. Um, V1, let's call this reverse version one. Okay, so let's call it again. Everything is fine. So now let's try to implement it in a different way. Okay, so this way is more of um, 
So this way where we take the recursive step and it kind of work backwards, I think it's a really good way when you're starting to learn how to do these algorithms. But another way to think about it is, um, is you can use these temporary variables as we talked a bit before, um, as um, you know, you can define an internal definition. And the idea is maybe we could create, while we're going through the list, L, right? Maybe while we're going through, what is this one here? While we're going through this list, maybe we could build something in a temporary variable that has um, the new reversed list, right? So let's try to do that. So to do that, to if we need a um, reverse iter, so because we need to have like a temporary variable that we're building on while we go through the list, this means that we need an internal definition w that uses a parameter to encode this temporary accumulator or internal accumulator. Okay, so let's write accumulator here and we have a list here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is um, let's keep here the reverse list so far. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna keep the reverse list here and this is the list we're processing, right? So uh, when we reach the base case, it means we've processed everything. So we should just return the reverse list, okay? And then let's think about what would happen when we get to the recursive step. So if we have a list with L and this is the first and this is the element, um, we now don't have this, so let's skip that for a moment. What we do have is, um, so, so far we have some accumulated list, which we don't know what it is. So that's a bit upsetting, uh, but let's say we have some reverse list here. Um, next thing we could have is, um, okay, so how do we initialize this? Okay, let's, let's try to think about this. So what we want to keep in this reverse list is uh, the elements I go through that I've seen already, and I want to reverse them somehow, okay? So we want to initialize this. Let me do, do, close this definition, and now I want to do, a def I want to call reverse, reverse iter. And I want to start with an empty list because the accumulator starts empty. And I want to uh, reverse L. Okay, so in, in the in the base case, so if we are accumulating the reverse list, uh, we kind of have to talk about the both parameters. Okay, so let's say our reverse list. So let's say our we're, we're midway through the computation. If we're midway through the computation, our reverse list would have uh, list three, four. And our list, we're kind of midway, right? So we've already have, by some magic, a list with three and four. And what we're doing is we're processing list L that contains just list one and two. Okay, so the first of L is gonna be three. The rest of list is gonna be a list with four. Now we know the reverse list, okay? So what do we need to do to call reverse iter? Okay, so reverse iter, um, now what we need to do, okay, so if we, have, if we have this list, first of list is gonna be one, right? And the rest of list is gonna be two. Okay, this was wrong. Okay, so if we have a list with um, one, and this is three, four. Let me think a bit. Ah, sorry, this is wrong. Uh, the parameters are all wrong. So this should be two, one, and this should be three, four. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me explain what's going on here. So if you're trying to reverse a list, right, and you're going through the elements of the list. Um, let me try to write that here, right? List one, two, three, four. Okay. 
and let's say I want to represent the case where I'm here. So I've already processed, whoops, where I'm in three. So I'm processing number three. Okay, so if I'm processing three and I'm accumulating the reverse list, that means I've visited one and I visited two, okay? So if I have a list with one, two, and I reverse it, then my reverse list is gonna be two, one, right? So if I'm here, then the rest of the list is gonna be, the, the current list that I have is a list with three and four. So that's why L is three and four, and that's why the reverse list is gonna be this part, but the reversed, okay? Because we wanna, we wanna accumulate what we've reversed so far. So basic idea. Okay, so what we have now is, so the, the first element's gonna be three, and now this is correct, okay. Okay, so if we have all of this, and we wanna call, we wanna do a recursive call, what we do is, okay, so now um, our parameter reverse list uh, has, um, what does it have? It has two, one, so I have three, and uh, the rest is gonna contain just four, right? So now, how do I, um, what do I do with three, right? I need to put three in the reverse list. So, now it becomes really obvious, right? Because I have three, I have a list with two and one, so if I put the element on the left-hand side, I now have a list with three, two, and one, and in the rest of the list, I have just four. So th the following step would kind of work out very easily. Okay, so let's see. What we do is cons with the first element of the list, which is three, and the reverse list, reverse list, right? Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna call the rest of the list Right, uh, and now if you think about it, what we're doing is um, the my new call becomes a reverse iter of a list with list three, two, one, right? And then the reverse list, uh, the rest of the list, which is gonna be list of four. Okay, so I started my call, so originally, my reverse iter had a list with uh, two and one, right? And here it had three and four. And this is the, the state that pertains to that call. And now, after my recursive step, what I did, I, I just moved the element three from this list to this list. And that's why it's like this. Okay, so now I hope I explained how the implementation works. Now let me see, oh, this has to be version two. Okay, Let's see what the error says. Identify already defined, so that's why I know that the name was uh, the same. So now let's see if the thing works. So this would be v1, so let's call this v2. See if it still works. Okay, it does work. Good, so this is another version where we're using a accumulator parameter to kind of build a new list. And as we, as we go, what we have to reason about, okay, is how do I put elements from this list to the, to the parameter that is being accumulated? It's kind of how I think about it at least. Okay, so this is the uh, the version that I've implemented. Um, and if you think about it, oops, where did it go? Uh, if you think about it, and if you think about uh, concatenation of numbers that we learned before, have we learned this before? Uh, I actually don't remember if I taught this before. So this is another example where we want to um, add an element. We want to add, I don't think I taught this. This is another example where I wanted to write a function that 
converts numbers to strings, but also adds a comma between it. You know, so if you have something like a list with one, two, three, it would do, it would return a string with one, two, three, but also with a little, little thing like this. This is what this concatenums is doing. So, um, yeah, just go through this, try to understand how it's implemented. And, but what really matters here is that these are two functions. And again, we try to uh, generalize the code or try to find a general pattern. And the general pattern that we find is this one where we have a base case and we have an, an L, uh, and we have a step function. And again, what we do is in the base case, we just return that the, the, the accumulated value. Which is being uh, which is being held in the internal parameter, right? And then in the step function, what we do is we apply this step function, where we take the first element and the base case, the which in this case kind of like the accumulator, right? Um, and this is how it works. Um, and you can, I hope by now that you can look at this example, and you can map it to the reverse the implementation of reverse. And notice that we could do a similar exercise like we did for map and the general recursion pattern of map. The idea is just to generalize that and make it into a function by itself. And that is uh, fold left. Fold left, the idea is that you you do the step first um, and then you do recursion. Whereas fold right, you do, the you do recursion and then you do the step. Okay, that's the only difference. Why it's called left and right, it must make sense if you compute it and look at the unfolding. Okay, so this is fold left. The only thing I did was after generalizing it, just call it a function exactly like we did for fold right. Okay, so nothing too surprising here. Um, and now we can rewrite concatenums just using um, fold fold left, which is pretty cool. Similarly, we'd reverse because it just becomes just cons. Okay, um, and then we can look at the difference between the non generalized version a generalized version of course here the assumption is that you understand what fold left is okay so another question we could do is this tail recursive and the answer is here's the call this is the outermost it's the same so this is tail recursive so fold left you know the naive implementation is tail recursive which is great we know that fold right is not so in the next video, we're going to talk a bit about that.